Hey, this is broken. My ear, this is broken. The female figure. Why are you here? The puss is here. The puss is here. Uh oh. Yeah. This is one of New York City's largest LGBT underground parties. Every Monday night in Hell's Kitchen, Vogue Nights brings the city's transgender, lesbian, bisexual, gay, and queer together for a voguing dance contest. Tonight. Uh, female figure performance, yeah. It's a, it's a category. It's a category in the ballroom scene that represents the women's, the, the LGBT community as far as the, like I said, the women's, the, the lesbians, the transsexuals, the drag queens, the, the cross gestures, the transgender, the transsexuals. I found it to be very supportive as we all come together and just and just support each other's, each other's passions. Major strides have been made for the acceptance of LGBT rights in the U.S., but what about transgender? The word for many people is still an unfamiliar term. However, several superstars like trans woman actress Laverne Cox and transitioning Olympic legend Bruce Jenner, stepdad to Kim Kardashian, are igniting a trans movement and giving the world a closer view of what it means to be transgender, in America that is. In some other parts of the world, to identify as LGBT can be a crime. And it's fair to say that many African countries are amongst the worst places to be LGBT. So what's it like to come out as transgender in Africa? On this episode of Africa in the City, I find out. Africa in the City. Real Africans, real stories. I'm from a country called um, Botswana in Africa. I identify as a trans woman, somebody transitioning from being male to female. I decided that I wanted you to stay here because it's better uh, to stay here, uh, you know, as a trans person. You know, there's less discrimination here than back at home. I'm asking about the, the job that is, if you are currently accepting, jobs for people who want to work as um, um, as, a, as a home health care uh, person. Christine Mavuma was born Christopher after having her story misconstrued twice in Botswana by local newspapers. She relocated to the U.S. and is now seeking asylum in order to stay. She hopes to tap into New York City's trans community and soon make her full transition from male to female. Right now I'm not comfortable about what I see and because it's not what I want to be. I don't think like a normal guy would think it's just different. I think even the way I do things, you know, it's hard for people to tell I was born male because it doesn't show. But I thought it was just, you know, that I was gay and uh, as time went on, I, you know, understood, I asked questions, I questioned myself as well. So it was tough at first, but um, I learned how to deal with situations because where I was working, uh, I didn't have any problem with uh, management. It's just the people that I was working with that had a problem. But not most place, places are like that. Especially if they find out you're trans, they won't tell you that they won't take you, but they will just take your, do an interview and take your, your resume and they don't call you back. Moisturize for my face. Mm. Yeah. What kind do you normally use? Or anything that's good? I use Clinique. Yeah. But I'm trying to see if I can use something that until I get money to buy the one I use. At 23, Christine began living life publicly as a woman in Botswana. The country is touted as one of Africa's more stable countries, and the LGBT community generally exists without much social and institutional pressure. However, same-sex relationships in the country is illegal. 
The Constitution does not protect LGBT persons. They face legal issues, have lack of health care resources, and face employment discrimination. It's still difficult for them to really come out and, you know, tell the tell other people that this is how they identify as. Because some live with their families and um, some they are afraid what people are gonna think. But only a small amount of people are already out. The term transgender is used when a person's gender identity does not match their assigned sex. Some reports suggest 1% of the world's population identifies as trans, with approximately 700,000 in America. But in Africa, a trans movement is growing. Tyler, in Guyana, is a mix of When the sportive urban chic is Riri. When the media beach is Nicki Minaj. Angolan pop star Titika is arguably one of the first modern-day musical artists to be internationally known as a trans woman in Africa. Já muito tempo eu já me transformei com 18 anos. Fácil não. Tanto mais que eu já fui excluída de muitos sítios e devagar a devagar eu vou entrar na mente deles. Que isso não é um bicho de cabeça e que eu vou fazer o bom do melhor além da minha situação pessoal. Eu tenho o meu talento de fazer alegrar o público. Eu vou conseguir. A paz que são muito amigos dos seus filhos, conversam com os filhos e resolvem tudo na boa. É tudo a base de uma conversa. Mas, como o nosso país é um país conservador, então há de se respeitar. Sempre há regiões que não usa brinco, há regiões que não arranja o cabelo, não pode desfrutar, não pode fazer nada. E a alimentação é boa, fora a cirurgia, né? Fiz lipo porque a minha barriga estava feia mais e fiz uma rinoplastia para ficar mais bonitinha. Before relocating, Christine traveled the continent to connect with others like herself. She's even traveled to Uganda, where a recently passed anti gay law banned same sex relationships. I will say this actually even for Africa in general. First of all, they think transgender people are gay people or they are lesbians. Breaking away from that has been so difficult to explain that being transgender is about gender identity and expression. And then being gay, lesbian, bisexual is about um, sexuality. Pepe is from Uganda. He's one of Africa's leading LGBT trans male activists. Just because um, I'm, 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 I'm a gay person, I should not wear a nice suit. I should not um, wear things that I desire. Yeah, is because there? society doesn't approve of whatever you're doing at the moment. I caught up with him while on fellowship in Washington, D.C. for the National Endowment for Democracy. He shared his story of transitioning from female to male and the long road ahead for Africa accepting transgender rights. I was nine and I just was like, mm -mm, this, this something is not fitting. And then, you know, getting to 12, I was like, I just need to talk to somebody about this. It, it has to come out. Mm -hmm. So I went to mama and I told her. Your mother? Yes. And her reaction? It was not a surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's not just Africans who find difficulty in um, understanding uh, transgender issues. Just understanding that two men can be together and two women can be, you know, together is spinning people's heads. <laughs> now for a person to come out and say, I'm transgender, it's like, okay, you, like your, your, your gender is in transit. Where is it going? <laughs> I had a boyfriend, but uh, it didn't work out well because he wasn't sure himself. He was falling both sides. He was a bisexual, so a lot of guys 
are bisexual and others are just curious and others want to date people who are just like me and you know it's hard to find somebody who just want to date trans people and if I think about what I want to become you know I feel more relieved and comfortable I feel that uh, I'll be happy I'm, I am happy but it's it's I feel it's not enough. Christine eventually wants to have her male organs surgically changed, but the gender reassignment process from male to female can cost up to $50,000. And from female to male, the cost is nearly $70,000, leaving many trans people to settle with hormone treatments. I was born male and I have transitioned into living my life as a woman, hormonally and physically. Hormonally, it's the rest of my life, but I really don't know if I want to get the full surgery. The SRS, which is sexual reassignment surgery, so pretty much they take the penis and put it into vagina, pretty much. Well, I had silicone um, injected into my face, into my cheeks, and then into my lower area, into my behind. I spent 1800 on my ass and I spent 300 on my cheeks. I want to get my nose done, I want it smaller. I want to get my jaw uh, shaped and shaved down. I want my chin done, and I also want to get my forehead done. I want to get more silicone in my body, um, and I want my implants. It's a process, you have to um, first undergo a psychological therapy to prepare yourself for what's going to happen. If you uh, have made a decision that you want to go all the way, so all the steps you have to understand what's going to happen. I feel that after I have, you know, finished with everything, I'll, I'll be happy because I know that now I've, I, I've you know, become who I've always wanted to be. Yeah. Africa in the city. Real Africans, real stories.